So in this video, we're going to do a couple guided practices. So we have this formula. There's sodium carbonate, hydrochloric acid, we get sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide as products. So we have an unbalanced reaction, no molecular masses or anything like that. First step, go ahead and pause, balance this, and find the molecular masses for these compounds. All right, if you're back, well, to balance it, I've got two sodiums on the left. Let's start with the first element there, and one on the right. So I'm going to need multiple sodium chlorides. If I do that, that'll give me two chloride, however, which means I go look at the left. I've only got one. I'm going to need two HCLs to get my two chlorides. That's going to give me two hydrogens, which, okay, I have that, so just need one water. And originally, we'd just been using one sodium carbonate to get those two sodiums. So that means I have one carbon, still have one carbon. I have three oxygens, and between the CO2 and the water, I have three oxygens. So we did it. We balanced it. It is a 1 to 2 to 2 to 1 to 1. In terms of molecular masses, if we add them up, two sodiums, one carbon, three oxygen, it's going to be 105.99 grams per mole. An H and a Cl, hydrogen's 1.008, chlorine's 35.45, so it's going to come out about 36.46 grams per mole. Remember, your molecular mass is just the formula. The fact that there's two hydrogen chlorides in the reaction doesn't change what the molecular mass will be. One formula unit of HCl is 36.46 grams per mole. Sodium chloride, same on deal. One sodium and one chloride in the formula, 22.99, 35.45. This will come out at 58.44 grams per mole. Water, two hydrogens oxygen, 18.016 grams per mole. Carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams per mole. We have a balanced reaction, and we have molecular masses. So what are we going to do with them? In this case, we're going to throw some reagents together. So we're going to toss 72.0 grams of our sodium carbonate and 42.5 grams of HCl together. Our goal is we want to find what is the maximum NaCl produced. That is our goal. So go ahead and pause, look at this problem, think about it, sort out how to do it, and give it a shot. Based on this amount of these starting materials, what is the maximum sodium chloride that would be produced? All right, well, if you're back, Let's think about what we have for a problem here. I'm trying to find a product. I'm trying to find sodium chloride. Well, sodium chloride being a product, you can only make it by converting your reactants. And we have two weights of reactants. Anytime you have two actual weights of starting materials, one of them is not going to be enough. One of them is a limiting reagent. So as you start to combine them, one will just run out first. And however much product you've made at that point is the most you can make. The extra of the other starting material doesn't do anything. It has nothing to react with. To solve this, there's a couple ways. But the simplest is usually take both starting materials and do the calculations to find out how much product they could become. Whichever makes less product, that was the limiting reagent. So how do we do that for sodium carbonate? Well, I have 72 grams of sodium carbonate. And any time I'm trying to find info about a second chemical in a reaction, I have to go to moles. So the first step is I have to get out of grams of Na2CO3 and into mole of Na2CO3. Well, we found our molecular mass. So 105.99 grams in one mole. This is going to show me that I have 
six seven nine three and we'll do sig figs at the end mole of Na2CO3 and if I do that for my hydrogen chloride well it is 36.46 grams of HCl in one mole of HCl and so we find this is 1.1657 mole of HCl and so at the moment I have found moles of my starting materials. Now clearly, I have more HCl, but that isn't what determines the limiting reagent. Remember, we need twice as much HCl. Just having more doesn't mean that you're the excess, or having less doesn't mean you're the limiting. This is why we need to keep going with the calculation. We need to take these on two products. So the next step would be to get out of mole of sodium carbonate and into moles of product, into moles of sodium chloride. Well, the balance reaction told us that for every one mole of Na2CO3, it was two mole of NaCl. And we see that from the balancing we did. One sodium carbonate, two sodium chlorides. So we just take those prefixes out front and use them to say, well, for every one, for every one sodium carbonate, we'll produce two sodium chloride. Now I could stop there and find the moles, or if you want to take it on all the way, you can say that, hey, for every one mole of NaCl, there's going to be 58.44 grams of NaCl. Since our goal was to find the max massive product. If we run those calculations, we will find 79.398 grams of NaCl is the amount we could make if all of our sodium carbonate converted. Back to the HCl, we do the same series of steps. I need to get out of moles of HCl and into moles of sodium chloride. Well, that is a 2 to two ratio. And so it is two mole HCl for every two mole NaCl. We then can again convert one mole NaCl into 58.44 grams of NaCl, just so we can go all the way to grams right away. If we calculate that out, we see 68 0.121 grams of NaCl. So what we find after our calculation is that if we took the sodium carbonate that we started with and we found how much sodium chloride it could make, it was just shy of 80 grams. But if we took the HCl starting material we had and found out how much sodium chloride it could make, it's just shy of 70 grams. We make less using the HCl. This is the maximum amount that could be made in this entire reaction. As soon as the HCl runs out, at the point it has produced 68 grams of sodium chloride, that's it. No more sodium chloride can be produced. Any remaining sodium carbonate just sits there without anything to react with. So this is our maximum NaCl possible which means way back at the beginning, HCl was our limiting. So we found our limiting reagent and we found the maximum product that could be created from this reaction, from this mixture of starting materials. Subsequent question though, how much of the excess reagent is left? So if HCl is our limiting, Sodium carbonate is our excess reagent, which, well, that means there's some amount of it remaining. It didn't all get used. So see if you can solve, sort that one out for a minute. Based on the amounts we calculated, how much of the other starting material still remains? Go ahead and pause and give it a try. All right, if you're back, 
Well, by identifying that HCl is limiting, we know that it's going to react with the other starting material until it runs out. If we can find how much sodium carbonate reacted with this amount of HCl, any that is left over is going to be the difference between the amount of sodium carbonate we had and the amount that reacted with HCl. And so we go back here to the section we outlined in green here. I know the amount of HCl present. I could use that, so 1.1657 mole of HCl was present. And again, we'll hold the sig figs till the very end. I can use that to solve the amount of sodium carbonate it reacted with. The balanced reaction says that there are two HCLs for every one sodium carbonate. And so I'm going to need two mole of HCl for every one mole of Na2CO3 that it reacts with. This will find 0 0.5828 mole of Na2CO3 reacts. This is the amount of sodium carbonate that is able to react with the HCl. At this point, HCl is gone. All of it will have reacted. So there's still more carbonate left over. 0 0.6793 mole of Na2CO3 total, minus the amount that reacted, 0 0.5828 mole of sodium carbonate. The difference is 0 0.09648 mole of Na2CO3. So there's a little bit that never reacted, and we can even find the mass of it. Every one mole of Na2CO3 was 105.99 grams of Na2CO3. And we can find that there were 10.226 grams of Na2CO3 remaining. So the maximum product we can make was based on our limiting reagent. And using our limiting reagent, we can find how much of our other re reagent reacted to figure out, well, what's the difference between the reacted sodium carbonate and the total sodium carbonate? That difference is the amount left over. And so we had too much sodium carbonate by a little over 10 grams. We had more than we needed. We could have saved this much material or added more HCl and reacted it, but the point was this is the amount we were in excess. In terms of significant figures, our molecular masses are all at least four sig figs, but our starting weights were three sig figs. 72.0 is three, 42.5 is three, and so our molecular masses all had more, so we're carrying three along. Balanced reactions are perfect, so two to two is infinitely accurate. Really, we just end up with three sig figs in the end. And so our mass for sodium chloride produced would round to 68.1 grams. And our mass of remaining sodium carbonate well, we would have had three sig figs. When we subtracted, we would have been three decimals in, so we would have kept from the position three decimals in, which would have actually only given us two sig figs. So remember when you subtract, 0 0.6793 minus 0 0.5828 both of these had three sig figs. Well, they both go down to the third from the decimal. So our answer, we only get to keep third from the decimal. So 0 0.0964, third from the decimal would be here and forward. So we actually lost the sig fig when we did our subtraction. We ended up with only two sig figs. So at the end, we get two sig figs. This would be 
Well, it's kind of hard to write that. 10 point, 1.0 times 10 to the first. But basically, we lost a little bit of accuracy due to subtraction in there. All right, continuing down, let's try our next problem. Okay, so let's look at sodium chloride plus silver nitrate goes to sodium nitrate plus silver chloride. In this case, we're going to make, so make 13.7 grams of silver chloride at 85.0% yield. So we do this reaction, but we know only 85% of it will actually become our product. We want to make 13.7 grams in the end. So the question here is find minimum starting materials. What is the minimum mass of each starting material we need so that after it does the reaction and loses 15%, we will have 13.7 grams of silver chloride. Let's go ahead and pause, give that a shot, and come on back. All right, well, if you give it a try, I'm converting chemicals, I'm going between things. So first things first, I'm gonna need some molecular masses and a balanced reaction. If I do my molecular masses, it's 58.44 grams per mole for sodium chloride is 169.87 grams per mole for silver nitrate and it is 143.32 grams per mole for silver chloride. We don't actually need sodium nitrate this time since it's not asking us about it. I want to make 13.7 but I know I'm going to lose some material so I have to try to make more than that. So what we really have is that there's 13.7 grams of silver chloride when we are 85.0%. What I need is some mass of silver chloride when we're at 100%. Basically, if you imagine that if you had, say, 20 grams at 100%, well, if you were at half percentage, you'd have half the grams. Your top and bottom have to move by the same multiplier. So I know that 13.7 is the amount when I'm at 85%. What is the amount when I am at 100%? Well, rearranging, multiply the 100 on both sides, our x grams, VGCL are going to equal 16.118 grams. So we needed to try to make 16.1 grams so that when we lost 15%, we ended up at the 13.7. So this is really our goal. We want 16.118 grams of product. Well, knowing how much product we really are trying to make, I can use the balanced reaction to solve out how much starting materials I needed. In this case, you'll notice it's one to one. So they're all one to one to one to one. One sodium and one sodium on both sides, one chloride and one chloride, which gave us one silver and one silver, and there was already one nitrate. So it's a one to one to one to one. I know the mass of silver chloride I need to make. 16.118 grams of silver chloride. I can find out how many moles that is. It is 143.32 grams of silver chloride in one mole of silver chloride. Because I can't compare it to the other chemicals until I'm in moles. Here we will find 0.11246 mole of silver chloride. I can take this on in two ways. One is I can take it and turn one mole of silver chloride into one mole sodium chloride. And the other is I can take it and say, 
well, one mole of silver chloride would go to one mole of silver nitrate. So they're going to be the same for the moment. They're both 0 0.11246. So we know we needed the same number of moles of starting material. The real change will become when we then convert it to mass. If I need that much sodium chloride to make that much silver chloride, well, how much does that much sodium chloride weigh? I know that one mole of NaCl is 58.44 grams of NaCl. I know that one mole of silver nitrate was 169.87 grams of silver nitrate. This will yield us 6.572 grams of sodium chloride and 19.103 grams of silver nitrate. The trick of this one is knowing the target amount of 13.7 grams was only 85% of what we needed to make, or what we needed to try and make. It meant we had to scale it up to figure out what our target product really was. Once I knew how much product I was attempting to make, I could then use molecular mass to find the moles of that product, use the balance reaction to find the moles of the starting material, use their molecular mass to find their masses. Following sig figs, well, we had three on our silver chloride, we had three on our percentage, and so this will continue through. We still got three going in, we're gonna have three all along the way, and so it's gonna be three at the end. And so for both of these, it'll be 6.57 grams of sodium chloride, and it'll be 19.1 grams of silver nitrate. These are the weights of starting materials I would need in order to try to make 16.1 grams of silver chloride, which at 85% yield would then turn into the 13.7 grams we actually wanted to make.